hello. hello. What you doing? Hey, what you doing? The other mate's got a bit of an itch going. Hey, what you doing, buddy? You right? Hey? Imbagay. How big ears you got? Well, hello everyone. Um, haven't been out for a ride for uh, a little while. A few changes. Had a few changes. Um, sold the KDM. Um, I sold my road bike, a BMW, and I sold the DRZ 400, which I thought I'd never sell. But anyway, a little bit more about that in a second. So, I really wanted to free up some money. I need some work to do around the home, so what could I do? So. I didn't sell the KDM because there was anything wrong with the bike. It was great. Good bike. But what could I get that did exactly the same thing, but also allowed me to have a bit of money in the bank as well? So what did I buy? Well, I bought an African Twin. Um, it's a 2016 model. It had 7,400Ks on it, which is pretty good. Um, I got it for a steal. I got it really cheap. Um, I live in New South Wales, actually it was for sale in um, Victoria. Just in a car over there parked, so I don't know what they're doing, anyway. And, um, yeah, got it for a steal. You know, I have to re-register it and, you know, pick it up. It was a 10-hour drive and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it was definitely worth it. Um, I'm just going to take my goggles off here for a second. There we go. Um, yeah. As you can see, it's what's that? The Honda racing colours. Not real. I don't. I mean, I was going to buy the bike brand new. I probably wouldn't get that colour, but I don't don't dislike it. Um, it's not too bad. So, like I said, 2016 model. Uh, it's got the ABS on it and the traction control stuff. Um, really good condition. Really condition. Uh, the chap you had a, a bit of a hard time selling. Apparently, he had it for sale for about six months, and. He lived out a little bit away from sort of town where he was in Victoria. So a lot of people don't seem to want to travel. Um, so I did 10 hours and it was worth the travel. Um, very good bike. Now, you never know who's up here. You don't know what they're up to. So um, it had the bash plate on it, as you can see. Huge bash plate, look at the size of it. I mean, you can land a helicopter on that. Massive big bash plate. So that was on it. I didn't have to put anything on that. It had these uh, the wider foot pegs. Um, they're only the cheap type ones, but I don't like the bloody red. I don't like bling like that. But anyway, uh, they're on there as well. And he had this, um, I think it's called a Black Widow. A Black Widow exhaust all the way through. All the way through. It's nearly about 1000 bucks worth of exhaust on it. So he had that on it. And that was already there. The bark busters were on it. Um, Oh, something else too that's on it. I've never had before. It's got heated grips. I am getting old because I've had them on here in Australia. It's getting a bit cold now. So I've been using the heated grips. Um, oh, yes, that, that is nice. Um, and you had this little USB charger which I had to connect. And the, the wiring, how he did all the wiring down here, it's... But anyway, it's, it's all good at the moment. So yeah, so the only thing I've actually done to it, guys, is that I've actually put um, this, this screen on it um, from Europe somewhere. You can see it's a smaller screen. I found the, the standard screen. I didn't like it. It's too big. It felt like you're on a chopper, the bloody screen in front of you. I don't like that. So, and it was buffering my helmet as well. This one's lower, but it's, it sits basically, you know, my visor. So I don't mind a bit of wind on the head, on, on the helmet. It doesn't worry me. I'm riding a bike. You know, I'm not one of these people who get a big visor and you know, a big shield in front of them. I'm happy with that short one. And it works spot on. I don't get any buffering or anything. So I've got that, and I've actually got uh, panniers, the racks. They're, they're actually at home now. i just got to fit them. I've apparently got to drill holes down through here somewhere to attach them. So, yeah, I've got them. The African Twin, I'd love to talk about it, um, my views on the African Twin as we ride along. Uh, long story short, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of pros, but it's got, got a couple of cons as well. 
Um, but all in all, I'm, I'm really happy with the bike. All right. We've had a lot of rain up here, uh, even since last night, so it's pretty boggy. And there's a lot of, um, you can see water ruts across the road and that type of stuff, so I've got to really watch where I'm going so I don't bang a rim. Um, yeah, so moving over, or moving on from what I said earlier, um, my DRZ was the last bike to, uh, that I sold, and I wasn't going to sell it, and I'm genuine to that uh, comment because uh, I did basically have a sale for it, but I rang the chap up and said, look mate, I've changed my mind, I'm, I'm keeping the bike. And that was it. So I was decided to keep the bike. Um, long story short, I got a phone call from my brother and uh, he asked to buy the DRZ off me. So so I've, it's still in the family. So my brother has bought my DRZ. Um, so at least it's in a good home. He looked after me moving on. So. What I had in my shed, guys, I had a KDM, I had another mid-dual sports, uh, dual uh, adventure bike, which I have kept, which was going to replace the DRZ. I won't talk about that bike yet. Um, so that's a bit of a project bike. So I had that and the DRZ. I had a road bike KTM and I had a few vin uh, vin uh, vintage motocross bikes. So long story short, I sold a lot of them. Um, I've one bike, really. Um, and that may be in the, down the road, and probably most likely the uh, the Tenere 700. That seems to be pretty good, the reports and all that sort of stuff. But that's, I don't know, I keep saying that might be a few years down the track, but I changed my mind pretty quick. Um, but anyway, back to the, uh, I'm, I'm bloody uh, going on with garbage, aren't I? Anyway, back to the African Twin. Uh, the two, the two main things that, that stand out for me compared to the KDM is power and the suspension, um, which we all know about. You know, the KDM's got more power and has better suspension, full stop. They're the two things that I notice. Uh, the suspension on this is less, very, very plush. Um, you can find the limits very, very quickly, and well, I can anyway. Um, I can see why people like them. If you're just doing the trial rides like this, the bigger open fire trails, and just ride them slow. But you can easily find the uh, you know the limit of the suspension very quickly. Um, what I do find on them too, the, the adjustments that you have, the compression adjustments and the rebound adjustments, they don't really do too much. Uh, that's that's due to the, the, the valving. So if you change it and turn the clickers up, which I've got on this, the clickers compression up fully and the rebound fully, it really doesn't change too much of the uh, of, of the forks actions, in my opinion. Okay, and that's my opinion. Um, like I've got rebound on, and that's the rebound of the shock, so that's how fast the, sh the shock returns after it's compressed. Um, and really doesn't do anything. So it's a bit like a pogo stick at the, at the back and, and the front as well. Uh, the front's a bit better than the back, but that, that's what it's like, okay? Um, but it's not terrible. I mean, if you ride it sensibly, and, and I'm not a sensible person, I go crazy sometimes. Um, it's fine. So, like I'm doing now, just cruising along. What am I there? 60, 70 k's, you know. So, it's fine. Now, the power, I mean, the KDM had 125 horsepower, uh, and you do notice the difference. I mean, the KDM, first, second gear on the road, that is, no, no clutch, you just, you know, wheelie all the way down the road, you know. Uh, this thing you can get it up in first gear, so to speak, and the gearing's been changed on this as well too, guys. It's 1546. I think standard 1646, so it should be a bit better for bottom end power. But the power's not terrible. It's it's still fine. Like I'm in fourth gear here now. So if I'm on the KDM, for example, and um, what are we doing here? But about three and a half thousand RPM. The difference on the KDM, if I power it on, like here. See that there? It didn't really do anything. It just kind of like chugged along. The KDM would just rapidly pick up power and you'd be roosting all the way up the track. That's where you know the difference with it. If I want to do the same thing on this, well, I've got to knock it down a cog, or even two. Uh, but it's not terrible. It's, it's very controllable and, and it's good enough. I can live with it. Um, so, 
then am I satisfied with a bike? Yeah, definitely. I have never ridden one before. So I was taking a chance, traveling 10 hours to pick up a bike that I may not like. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I'm, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, another thing that I also like with this, it's actually lower seat height as well. So on the normal uh, seat height, so the standard height, that's not on the lower position, I'm almost flat footed. I'm 5'9 and I'm almost flat footed with my boots on. So moving the bike around at a stand still, I'm a lot more comfortable on this compared to the KDM. I mean, I, I, I dropped the KDM twice basically standing still because I was really just on my balls on my feet on that thing. And my feet were a little bit, my legs, sorry, were a bit further apart because it is a bit fatter between the seat junction there in the tank. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing with the KDM and compared to the, the Honda that I noticed. Right, well, let me turn off up here, do we? And see all the holes up there. Um, is that the weight bias? The KDM had a really front, front end wise feel and, and it felt really connected and buried to the front, to the ground. Really good. I was really confident in the front end of the KDM. Look, I don't know what the weight bias is on the KDM, if it's 50-50 towards the front and back, or is it, you know, 51, 52 front, you know, 48, 47, whatever, you know, at the back. But I reckon it's the weight bias is towards the front on the KDM, all right? And with that, it gives you a good feel to the front end, but it drops into here things harder, like these bumps I've got here, see these? So you can feel it dropping into them harder. Now the KDM, sorry, the Yamaha, oh, I'll start again, the Honda, it's definitely has to be weight bias towards the back. So I reckon the weight's more 51 at the back, 52, and less at the front. So the weight's more towards the back, so the back's more planted than the front. So it gives you more of a lighter feeling in the front. All right? That's how it feels to me. Not a bad thing. Um, what it means is the front's not diving into things as hard as what the KDM did. Okay, um, I'm gonna give this track a go today. It may be too boggy. Uh, we might have to turn around. Just had to plug it. Uh, but this has got a Santa stand and it's good for oiling the chain and all sorts of stuff as well on rides, you know, when you're out on a big long ride. Um, so that's handy to have as well. Sorry. Uh. Plus I'm running road tyre pressures <laughs> as well. Probably should let them out a little bit. You know, I've only got 38 in the back or something, so whatever standard. 36 I think it is, 30 in the front. We don't want to go in there now, do we? Well, that is just sliding all over the place. I did buy pass a guy on a KDM. Look like an older one. I think it might look like an old 990 or something like that, I think it was. I'm pretty sure he's come this way. You can see some uh, track marks. Oh, can't go up. Silly today. Like I said, it's just too slippery. Get myself caught. Here. Oh, we're not going through here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And now it's deep over there. Where do we go here? Should we go this way? It's a spinning! <laughs> ah, bloody snot! Here we go. Now that is rocky. Okay, that's uh, that's the end of the ride. We go back out onto the road up here pretty soon. So uh, all in one piece. And the overall review of the African Twin, it's, it's a yeah, it's a good bike. You know, it doesn't really do anything great, but it doesn't do anything really poor. So uh, I'm actually enjoy uh, riding the uh, the big girl. So I'm not disappointed in um, actually buying it. So that's good. Always good. But anyway, if you hang around, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch up next time, hey, and I'll talk.